The animate section here on the animation toolbox lets us deal with poses and motions in a single unified interface. These tools allow us to do lots of useful things whilst animating, such as taking the poses for whole characters like this, being able to copy them, paste them in new places, perhaps with mirroring, so that we can either copy poses directly or properly invert them, getting results like we see here. We can copy whole poses or motions between characters like this, getting full automatic retargeting of those poses and motions to account for the different sizes that our characters may be. And we can take simple motion clips such as single cycles like this, and we can repaste and reuse them to repeat and extend and just keep on pasting these poses and motions in to allow us to very quickly and simply build up whole animations either from little clips as we go along or indeed from loading saved motions in from previous scenes to reuse on new ones. In order to achieve all this, let's take a look then at all of the details of how these pose and motion tools work so that we can use them to best effect on our scenes and characters. These tools have a good few different options and a few different ways of working, but are very simple to get along with once you've got the options down, and also provide a great level of efficiency when working with animation. They also have different ways of working depending upon the types of items that you're working with. Specifically, they can work with general items, so basically anything that you want in any scene, any kind of animated null or camera or anything else. And additionally to this, they have special working modes when working with Rigit rigs. Switching between these two different types of working method is simple enough as it's based off the selection criteria that you have here in the selections area of the panel. With of course any of these kinds of selections being for general item, whilst the rig specific selections let you work with Rigit rigs. The tools are also responsive to the channel selections here which means if you're wanting to transfer a pose or a motion only on certain channels, you can do that by activating or deactivating the appropriate channels in the selector here. The basics are very simple. You choose to either work in pose or motion mode. You can copy, paste, save, load, and reset poses and motions. Copy and paste, obviously, copy the pose or motion from one item and paste it onto something else. Save and load are basically the same. Save is pretty much copy to file and load is essentially paste from file. Reset will set the current pose back to its base state and will also scrub out animation or motion when working in motion mode. We also have options for mirroring and matching the spaces of poses and motions copied between different items. So let's start off having a quick look. We have our light item here. It obviously has a position and rotation at the current keyframe, even though, of course, it does have a motion on it. Let's say we were looking at the position here, which you'll notice is in between keyframes. Clearly, there is still a value for the position and rotation, though it's not recorded as a key. We have cell on for the selected item. We're in pose mode. We can copy that pose, come out to some other point in the timeline where we want the pose to be repasted or copied to, click paste, and there we see the pose that was copied has been repasted faithfully. When working with the pose tool, the pose that is pasted works something like the keyframe tool. And so not only will it go for the specific channels selected here, it will also be created with the spline type that is selected along the top here. How's about the camera then? We can pick that. Let's for instance, turn off the position so we're only getting the rotation here. The pose is still stored in memory. As such, I can click paste, and we see that the camera takes on the rotation values from that saved pose. Do notice one important thing about the channel selection here. It only applies to pasting or loading of poses and motions, not to copying. When you copy a pose or motion, everything gets copied, but you can decide which channels it is repasted onto. Therefore, if I have only the rotation selected, I have the light selected, I copy its pose, come over to the camera and were to turn position on and paste, then it has indeed pasted the position. So let's just get rid of that and take a look at what we get with the motion. 
As we saw, this light has a motion going about on it, just like this here. And we can see that I've done something to the key curves here to get this little spline action. If we have a look in Graph Editor over here, then what we can see is that some of these curves are set to linear, some are set to TCB. Again, here we see TCB on the Y, and on the Z we can even see a Bezier going on on one of the keyframes there. Unlike the Pose tool, the Motion tool will ignore the curve selection that is made up here, and it will copy everything from the channels. It will obviously copy value and time, it will copy the TCB settings, it will copy the Bezier handles. All of these options that you would ordinarily set on the graph editor will be copied for each key and channel. So with motion mode selected, let's click on copy for the lights motion here. And you'll see that when you copy a motion, or of course you save a motion, you get this little dialog pop up for the start and stop points of the motion that you want to copy. This allows you to copy motion slices rather than entire motions over the whole timeline. In this case, I'm going to copy all of it. So I'll just click OK on that. I can now come to some other point in the timeline because of course, not only can you copy between items, you can offset in time, just like in the pose tool by putting your playhead somewhere else. And so with my light still selected, I've come out here to frame 80 and I will click paste. And we see that the motion has been repeated starting there at frame 80. I can come perhaps to frame 20, select my camera, click paste, and we see that the motion there, obviously starting at zero, the camera was keyed down here, but from 20 onwards, it is following the exact same path as the light, absolutely identically. And as we can see, if we look at its channels, all of the key and curve type has been copied over, including, of course, Bezier handle settings. Do notice, of course, that just like the good old pose tool here, the motion paste is also sensitive to these settings here. So let's say that I turn off the Y positioning here. We'll just come up, put the camera somewhere on Y like this, click paste. And what we see is we've got the X and Z components of the motion only copied over the Y has not been keyed. If at some point I'm wanting to get back to the default 000 rest state for something, then I can come here into pose mode, click reset, and we see that that does reset the pose like this. I can also reset motion. So if I come to the motion option there, camera still selected, click reset, you'll see that it's animation is scrubbed out entirely there. And of course, this will work on the channel selection. So there's my light. Let's say I activate just the Y position here and click reset. Then what we see is only the animation on the Y channel has been erased. The X and Z and rotation information remains. These tools, of course, as I said, have specialist options when working with rigid rigs. Primarily, of course, we will see that what we get is retargeting. So if I have this rig over here that's just doing a little simple walk there, I can use rig selection mode here, copy, say that pose, come over to my T-Rex here, paste that pose, and we see that the pose is retargeted to the larger size of the T-Rex there. This means that reusing poses and motions between different rigid rigs is very useful and efficient. Also, notice what the reset tool will do in the case of a rigid rig. With a normal standard item, a null or a camera, it will set it back to 000 on position and rotation. In the case of a bone, it gets reset back to whatever position and rotation it had its rest position and rotation recorded in. But in the case of a rig it rig, it will be reset back to its bind pose. We all of course know that we should try to keep bind poses on frame zero, but every now and then we do lose them. And sometimes when you're animating, you can get your character, have all the controls posed around and wind up getting yourself into a bit of a muddle. It can therefore be handy when you want to create a brand new pose 
just to be able to select your rig and just reset it back to its original bind pose. So there we have the most basic functionality of the pose and motion tools here. There is of course more to explain which we will see in subsequent videos.